Well, welcome to the August 9th Oshkosh Advisory Park Board meeting. Um, as you, we are virtual again, so um, if you have, want to make a comment, kind of just raise your hand and Ray or Stacey, keep an eye out on who has things to say. Um, please make sure you're muted when you're not talking. And we can get started. Ray, would you like to introduce our new alternate board member? Sure. Um, Joe Stevenson is uh, recently appointed by the mayor and council as the second alternate. Um, I gave Joe just a brief orientation earlier this uh, or this evening. So, Joe, you just want to give the group a little background and why you're interested in the parks board? Yeah, sure. Uh, is there a delay at all? I feel like my camera is kind of delayed. Uh, That's not bad. No, okay. Uh, uh, Joe Stevenson uh, lived in Oshkosh for a while now. My family's all from the area. Uh, I am a city planner with the city of Menasha, uh, so my background is all in planning. Uh, in my personal life, I'm pretty involved with uh, neighborhoods to uh, any kind of just community uh, togetherness type of thing. I was on the board for the co-op for a while. Uh, so really interested in just kind of making Oshkosh a better place, and I think parks are a great way to do so. Welcome. Yes, welcome. All right, Stacey, would you roll call, please? Uh, Bartelt? Here. Davis? Here. All right, Dirth said that he would be out, so did Groyal Hudak? I can see their phone number is there. Martin is excused. Matt? Here. Millet? Here. And, and Paul Mary? Ray, did you hear her. from Lori that she wouldn't be here today? Okay. I don't see her yet. Stacy, you, you might want to turn your video off. You, you're getting buffered occasionally. Oh. Give that a try. All right. I'm sorry. sorry. Is, you just don't want to see me. <laughs> no. Is, is Devin here? She is. Yep. She said, I'm here. Um, her phone number is the 715 number. Okay. All right. Well, next up is election of officers. Because this has to be done by a neutral party, I will open up the floors for um, nominations for chair. Amy. Would you accept the nomination, Amy? I do. And yeah. because I, I need to ask three times, any other nominations for chair? The last time, any nominations for chair? Um, all right, we, if somebody would like to make a motion to nominate Amy as chair, you can do so. I do. This is Becky. And a second. I second, Ms. Lester. And Stacy can take a roll. All right, Bartelt. Aye. Davis. Aye. Hudak? <laughs> yeah, sorry. Hudak? Aye. Aye. Okay. All right. Um, Matt? Millet? Aye. Aye. And then we will use the, we'll use the two alternates as well. So, Stevenson? Aye. And Schellinger? Aye. All right. Thank you, everyone. Amy, it's all yours to take nominations for vice chair. All right. We now need nominations for vice chair. And they don't have to be present to be nominated. <laughs> I nominate Tony. Do 
You get to do it three times, Amy. Oh, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> um, nominations, any other nominations for vice chair? And last time, any nominations for vice chair? Now we need a motion and a second for Tony for vice chair. We have a motion. Can you do it for vice chair? Second. I think that was Devin and Becky. I'm sorry, who was the first one that made the motion? I believe it was Devin. Thank you. Yeah, so I thought it was her voice. So Devin. go ahead. Thank you, dear. Roll call. Bartelt. Aye. Davis. Aye. Budak. Aye. Matt. Aye. Millet. Aye. Uh, Stevenson. Aye. And Schellinger? Aye. Thank you. We'll move on to the minutes from the June 14th meeting. Were there any comments, questions, changes that needed to be made? All right, well, if everything looks good, then I'll make a motion to approve the June 14 minutes. I'll second, this is Lauren. Thank you, Lauren. All right, All right. roll call again, uh, Bartelt. Aye. Davis. Aye. Jack. Aye. Who that? Okay. Um, Matt. Aye. Millet. Aye. Stevenson. Aye. Challenger. Aye. All right. Thank you, everyone. Just, Aye. just to give Joe and Joe and Colby a quick heads up. When we're doing virtual meetings, uh, re we're required to take a roll call vote on everything. Otherwise, if we're in person, we can just do a voice vote and make it quicker. But virtual, it has to be this way. Okay. All right, Ray or Stacy, do we have any citizens on to make any statements that you're aware of? Um, I see uh, Pasquale Manning, I think, uh, is here for the Chief Oshkosh item. And then there's a number ending in five four. I'm not quite sure who that is. Um, so I think it's Mr. Kim. You'd have to unmute them, probably, right? No, it shows that he's not muted. So yeah, I just looked up okay. his number. That's Dwayne's number, I believe. Okay. So they're. Both people are here for agenda items, Amy. Okay. All right. So we will move on to the presentation from Amy Albright. Ray, do you want to introduce Amy? Sure. Um, Amy, I sent you the presenter privileges. So if you want to start sharing your screen and make sure that's working for you. Um, Amy is the executive director of our Convention Visitors Bureau. And she'll go through um, a summary of a presentation that was given to some community members as well as the Common Council recently from Roger Brooks and Amy will tell you more about who Roger is and, and why she's here. Um, and there's one point of focus that Amy and I will talk on after the presentation or towards the end, I guess. So take it away, Amy. Okay, awesome. Am I the right Amy to be speaking right now? <laughs> <laughs> you are. We'll call you Amy Jody. I kept getting confused. They're like, Amy, I'm like, oh, no, that, not me, not yet. So uh, thanks for the time today. I'm going to try to uh, go through this pretty quickly, um, but I really want to uh, give you an overview of what we learned from 
Uh, Roger Brooks, um, he is with a company that um, does destination assessments. Uh, the Convention and Visitors Bureau hired Roger Brooks to come to Oshkosh, and I'll just tell you a little bit about um, what that looked like. Um, so uh, he loved Menominee Park, and you'll hear me uh, talk about that several times. Um, he really raved about it uh, through the throughout the presentation and really um, emphasized um, the the power of parks and um, power of beautification. So I think, uh, you know, hats off to everybody on this committee who works on that and sees obviously the importance of that for our city. Uh, just one of the things that he started off with, these, these slides are taken right from his deck. And um, he really came into Oshkosh and secret shopped at our community. Um, he did not do interviews. We did not tell him what to go see. He just went and came in as a visitor and went around the town um, seeing what he could see. Um, his experience, why we looked at hiring somebody like Roger Brooks, he's done these destination assessments um, in over 2000 communities, um, in many communities across the state, um, just has incredible experience. Um, he comes in looking at the community wearing kind of three hats. Um, one of them is a place to live, raise a family and retire. One of them is a place to work, invest, or bring a business. And then obviously what the Convention and Visitors Bureau thinks about is a place to visit. Um, so he looks at it from all of those angles, but what's I think really important to understand is really all of those things work together. So um, if we you know, have a place that people wanna visit, um, the likelihood is they would want to potentially work here, live here, um, or retire here. So um, it all makes a difference. He was here over Memorial Day weekend, a little bit before that Memorial Day. So he commented on how much the bridge was going up. He took lots of pictures. Um, I think in his original slide deck, he had a, was a two and a half hour presentation. He had about 400 slides. Um, I've pared that down to, hopefully I can get this in in about 10 minutes because would love any questions um, that people have. Um, just really, you know, showing the beauty of our town. Um, really loves um, the pops of color that, um, you know, he saw around town, really talked about the importance, like I said earlier, of beautification, uh, just showing, um, you know, the beauty of the river walk, um, and just, again, really just loved Menominee Park. So the focus of his whole thing, um, him coming to Oshkosh, was what else can be done? So, I mean, obviously, we've come a long way in Oshkosh. We do great things in Oshkosh. But what can we do to make Oshkosh even better, stronger, and more desirable, a more desirable place to live, invest in, and visit? So I always want to tell people everything that's said in this um, in this presentation is really based on what we can do to make ourselves better, continuous improvement. Not that we're doing anything wrong, but that we can continue to get better. Um, so he he categorized the things that he found in in town where he thought there were some opportunities. And wayfinding signs he thought were a really big deal. He talked a lot about them. Um, he loved our Welcome to Oshkosh signs. Um, he really thought that there was an opportunity to create more wayfinding systems throughout the community. Um, he was thinking this right here. Um, I think this had been a spot for um, one of the lake flies. And he thought, you know, this might be a great spot for a map of the river walk. Um, he thought the river walk was fantastic. Just thought that obviously um signage and telling people where they're at and where they can go would be a great idea um, the great news there is and i'm sure ray um, maybe has touched on this or will touch on this but the city actually already had this um already knew that this was an issue and this project is moving forward so that was great to kind of get that affirmation that it was needed um, again you know if if you're walking down this river walk and you know oshkosh you might know where you are but if you're visiting or new to town, um, you might not. Um, so that was just, uh, wayfinding was a big thing for him. He really talked a lot about how it is an investment. Um, while it's expensive, it will increase really all of the, um, all of the economic you know, um, factors in, in your community because people know where to go. Um, he really talked a lot about inviting people back. So if people come to Oshkosh, what are the ways that we're inviting them back? Um, he'd have a great example of EAA and really talking about like, you know, we're open, um, come, you know, come see us. Um, he really liked the Opera House Square sign where it was learning more about First Fridays. Um, so if you were downtown, you could look into, you know, what are First Fridays. Thought there were some opportunities at the Leech with signage, um, just talking about what upcoming events might be there. 
um, he did talk about this, you know, that one was inside, but it was a little bit harder to see. Um, thought there were some opportunities at Pollock Pool too, with, um, you know, some opportunities for some more signage. Um, he talked a lot about RVers. He actually um, was traveling in an RV. He stayed at Osh Vegas, and um, he really talked about things that we could do as a CVB um, to really attract and um, give RV travelers a better experience. So he really talked about what, you know, particularly during COVID, um, you know, RV sales really went crazy and people are really looking for, um, you know, looking for places that can come via RV. Um, he had the idea of creating a trail or two. He really liked our breweries and he thought we could maybe make an Oshkosh libations loop where we could invite people to Oshkosh to, you know, come and do a tour of the breweries, you know, maybe go to Vines and Rush's winery and make kind of a marketing tool, you know, a marketing piece out of that. Loved our museums and thought that there were some really great opportunities to kind of cross market those. Thought there was an opportunity to talk about the very best of Oshkosh. She was so impressed with so many things in Oshkosh and I didn't want to gloss over this. Um, just, you know, he really talked about, you know, when you go to a town to visit, you probably know about only a couple of attractions. So he gave the example of Orlando. He said, you know, a lot of people go to Orlando to go to Disney, but look at all the ancillary businesses that, um, you know, succeed because of, of Disney. And so he said, you know, talk about what's best in your town. And some of the ones that he, you know, pointed out, I just thought it was really interesting because a lot of them um, fell under the city's categories. Um, he loved EAA, you know, which we all do. Um, he thought Pollock Community Water Park was such a gem. He was just really wowed by that. He loved the pain. Um, he loved the Oshkosh Public Museum, um, thought that the concerts at the Leech were just a great, you know, a great thing. Uh, the River Walk, um, the Grand Opera House, um, talked about Menominee Nation Arena, um, you know, if there were special events at the Waters, Fox River Brewing, Oaks Candy, Carmel Crisp, Leon's, Artie and Ed's, um, the on the loose cruises and then I thought this was really interesting like I said at the beginning he loved Menominee Park but he really emphasized that you know we could really market it as one of the best family parks in the country and we know that not only from a visitor standpoint but, but from a relocation and you know for our companies that are trying to attract talent to our communities the people are looking for parks and we have some very uh, you know amazing parks and um, I think that really you know really supports um, investing in these parks and um, you know keeping them keeping them great and keeping them growing um, he loved the trains he thought it was just so family friendly he just he loved the play structure um, you know it's it's just such a phenomenal park which obviously I'm um, preaching to the choir here um, he loved the sign really talking about what was coming next at the park so really was into you know how do we inform people what's going on and um, he said, you know, that you just really can't do enough with that. And then, of course, the Wyawash Trail. Um, there were more that he listed, but I just wanted to kind of, you know, do that. I had to just throw in Pete's Garage because it seems that no one can come to Oshkosh without um, mentioning Pete's Garage. So he was a big fan. Um, he really said, you know, let's talk about hidden gems in Oshkosh. Um, gave some examples of how Door County has done a great job with that. And then he, this is kind of, you know, I kind of sped through the rest of this to sort of get to this section. Um, he really spent a lot of time on downtown and he felt like we had a lot of opportunities downtown. Um, he talked a lot about statistics and, and why downtowns are important. Um, basically um, said that there's really nothing you can invest in other than schools to get a better return on investment than your downtown. Um, one of the things that he did is he started at the convention center in the hotel, the downtown hotel, and he did a visual of how long it took for him to get to something kind of exciting. So um, if you know where the 100 North Main building is, it's a great building, but really it's all commercial. There's really not any retail. Um, there's really nothing to kind of bring people in. Um, he's, you know, he said as he was walking, I mean, it wasn't until he got to Screwball Sports Bar or market boutique on Maine before he really was like, oh, there's there are some things to do downtown. So we really talked about um, how do you make sure that people know that there's something worth walking through that area. And he really felt there are a lot of opportunities in those first blocks as you head downtown. 
Um, and so again, this was just him kind of talking about um, the things that he saw um, when he was downtown. He was a big fan of blade signs and um, the, these slides are kind of the before, so, or these would be the before. So as you're looking down Main Street, um, you're really not sure what's on Main Street. Um, you're looking down and, and, you know, are these stores, are these restaurants, are these bars, what are these? Um, so he really recommends to towns um, that they put up blade signs that really um, show people what's going on. So you know you've seen these in different towns, uh, Door County, Lake Geneva, um, you know, lots of towns, and he felt that there was a lot of value in getting those blade signs up downtown. So he talked about that. He talked a lot about curb appeal, really just kind of showing the difference between something um, where there's not maybe a lot of um, florals or beautification efforts to, um, you know, some of the places that have really invested in that and what a difference those make. Um, you know, he loved Fletch's, um, you know, talked about Peabody's and loved the lights and what was going on there. Um, you know, really thought that we could add some pots and benches and things um, in downtown to make it more inviting, really like any of the outdoor seating that was available. Um, thought that, um, you know, the, the what's now Wagner Market and Winnebago Bike, he thought they were doing a great job. Just felt that there was a lot of opportunity for beautification. Um, so really talked a lot about that. Um, you know, this was picture, I'm kind of laughing because that woman back there is wearing a winter coat. It was Memorial Day weekend. So um, that's probably not one we would use in our tourist um, brochures, but um, obviously empty flower pots aren't very inviting. Um, so, you know, just some of those things that people are seeing when they come that we might um, overlook when we live here. Um, so talked about, you know, how the downtown could do better with that, gave examples of what it looks like when um, there are planters and beautification is taken, you know, taken seriously uh, like this. Um, talked about curb appeal, that that can account for 70% of first time sales. So, um, you know, really have been um, trying to work with the city and trying to work with store owners. Um, there's, it's not quite as simple as just adding all these. There are some ordinances and things that are in place, but um, the city's been working um, with the downtown to get that done. So, um, you know, it's, it's pretty obvious, um, you know, what the difference looks like when, you know, when you have, um, you know, a focus on beautification. So just talking about, you know, the addition of, you know, color, um, window displays, that kind of thing. Um, and yeah, so those were just kind of, you know, the opportunities that he saw downtown. Um, talked about um, downtown merchants being able to have outdoor displays um, and really just, you know, how that becomes more inviting in a downtown. So these are just all examples. He really felt we had a very brown downtown. Um, he actually felt like our, our city was pretty brown. So he um, really, I think, made the case for public art and um, you know murals or anywhere that you can add color. Um, like I said, he loved the color of Beckett's, but thought you know maybe there's an opportunity for some murals, you know, along City Center. Um, he um, just you know just said you know color obviously makes a big difference. Um, pointed out, you know, these row houses and, you know, what a difference the color made there. Um, and now that I've told you this, when you drive downtown, you will see a lot of brown. Um, he thought there were some opportunities with our crosswalks. He thought there were some um, that needed to be emphasized a little bit more, particularly uh, in regards to the river walks so for safety. And then he, he suggested that we might try to do something fun um, or artistic when we're looking at those crosswalks. So again, just you know, talking about the power of beautification. And then finally, he uh, really recommended um, a programmed downtown plaza. He thought that that was um, something that would be a game changer for Oshkosh. Um, so he looked at areas downtown that he thought you know, could be possibilities. Um, he really, you know, when he looked at this, he thought this was actually where our farmer's market was held because of the sign. Um, you know, he, he looked at areas that were that were maybe more obvious that had room, but um, I think there's a group, and we'll talk about this later, that's really leaving no stone unturned downtown as to looking at where a possibility could be for a downtown plaza. Um, thinking of downtown as the community living room, really making it inviting, um, having um, programs going on um, uh, quite a bit of quite a bit of the time, and we'll talk a little bit about that. The key ingredient is having programming, and he believes that if you don't have 250 days of activity in your downtown, you really can't be fully successful. 
And when we count up the days downtown, we have a hard time of even really getting to 100. And that would include um, really all of the events that we do downtown. Um, you know, this would just be, you know, something that would be going on more year round. Um, so, you know, his studies show that bringing people downtown obviously helps the businesses and then the businesses grow because there's more people and then you have better businesses and there's just, you know, this kind of cyclical um, effect that brings people to your downtown. He feels that on any given night, about 1% of your population really should be downtown. Um, if you think about days when you're down at the farmer's market, you see what that looks like. You see what a thriving, amazing downtown looks like, and we have it going on on those days. But how do we, how do we get that to happen more often? Um, these are just some examples of cities that went with an idea like, like a downtown plaza. Um, they took this parking lot and they made it into a plaza. Um, these plazas, the ones that he would recommend where we live in Wisconsin, would have an ice rink in the winter and would have some kind of water water effect in the summer. Um, the ice rink would be something that would not be controlled by Mother Nature. So we've, um, as you know, we've had um, the ice rinks the last couple of years and they've been awesome, but they really can't be relied on from a standpoint of promoting them because we're never sure when the weather is going to co cooperate. Um, this is Rapid City, South Dakota, and this is, you know, what they did to their downtown, added, um, added this, um, this downtown plaza, and they really saw the growth. He has, um, he has detailed accounts of what happened when these towns added these. Uh, but as you can see, there's, you know, always the water aspect going on, and then there would be the ice skating rink um, in the winter that would have skate rental. Um, you know, it just really creates a reason for people to come downtown. Um, again, this is another example of what a water feature could look like. Um, this was um, a social media post from Rapid City, South Dakota. And, you know, the person wrote, I grew up in Rapid City and it was never as cool as it is now. So really looking at, you know, what brings people back to town and what brings, you know, what, what keeps us competitive as a place people want to live and work and visit. Um, this is in Indiana. Um, and then you can just kind of see there's all different looks, there's all different sizes, um, and it's all, all just very preliminary right now. And again, just a suggestion. Finally, I know I said finally before, but um, finally, finally, um, really what this is all about is quality of life. So we know that, you know, we have businesses that are looking for jobs, so we need to make sure that we're a city where people want to go. Um, we want to make sure that we're a welcoming community. We want to make sure that we have amenities that people are looking for. Um, you know, the new reality is that this is all kind of the same thing. Community development is leading tourism development. We know that it's just as important to have great parks for tourism as it is for our residents and for people that we want, you know, to come to come live here. So he kind of leaves us with this mission to become the most desirable place to live, you know, in America, he says, which, you know, um, you know, we can go for um, in our state or in our county. Um, so where are we, what are we doing now? We've kind of created this Destinations Oshkosh team and we're really looking at all of this information and some of it is really low hanging fruits like getting those signs up. That's stuff that we can really kind of implement pretty quickly. A downtown plaza obviously takes a lot more planning, a lot more thinking, a lot more how would this be funded and where would this go and what makes the most sense for our city. Um, so again, I want, you know, I want to be very clear that all of this is really recommendations, but um, probably things to really think about. Um, and so um, just finally, I, I like to leave with, um, you know, here's to making Oshkosh an even better driving place to live, work, invest in, in and visit. And um, Ray's heard this probably 20 times now as he sits on our CVB, CVB board, but I believe this to be true. And really what this, this quote is saying, hopefully you can read this on your screen. Um, but basically, if you build a place where people want to live, they're going to want to work there. Business is going to have to be here. And if business is here, people will have to visit. So we all are working in this big cycle together. This isn't about building something just for visitors to come in. This is for all of us to enjoy attract visitors, attract people, retain the people who live here, it all works together. So whew, there's my there's my presentation and I'm finally done. <laughs> Great job. <laughs> I'm a fast Thanks, talker, Sam. thank goodness. <laughs> <laughs> 
Bef before we open it up for questions, I guess just a couple of quick comments from me. Amy touched on the um, the wayfinding signage along the Riverwalk. That is something that um, was included in the, the budget last year, I believe, that planning economic development staff have been working on with myself and our electric division. Um, we are to the point of putting out the bids for the sign. So we've been working on designs. Um, we had the planning staff member re recently retire who was um, in charge of that project and their replacement has taken it on and making a few tweaks. So that's something as Amy said is, is already ongoing and should be happening um, soon. Um, I think the the bigger one I, that Amy and I wanted to, to kind of open up the discussion and just get some initial feel from the board is, um, you know, talking about a downtown plaza area. And obviously the first site that comes to mind would be potentially Opera House Square. Um, but our, a small group of us have gotten together, which includes planning and economic development staff, because they're aware of um, the, the parcels downtown, which may be available, which maybe could be purchased, what are vacant. Um, so they're taking a look and, and coming up with an inventory of possible properties in the downtown area that might be able to accommodate some type of a downtown plaza. Um, and one being Opera House Square out of that handful or um, half dozen or two um, potential sites. So um, thanks, Amy, for presenting that. I'll um, turn it over to, to Amy Davis and comments or anything you'd like to say. Great presentation, really interesting. I mean, that's so nice to have someone come in and, and do that for us. Oh, and Amy, I wanted to mention there is the two and a half hour um, presentation that you're all welcome to watch. I will um, share the link. Crazy enough, it goes pretty fast. Um, it sounds crazy to listen to two and a half hours, but um, I've listened to it about 10 times, um, which shows you the um, level of excitement in my life. But um, it um, is pretty interesting. So I will share that with Ray to send out to the to the um, to your committee. Thank you. Um, Amy, I just want to ask a question. Um, when uh, folks were starting to look at, you know, kind of an obvious um, discussion point of Opera House Square, was the Leech Amphitheater discussed at all in that process? Because I, I feel like we, we do have a downtown plaza at the Leech, but the you know, the programming um, as fantastic as it is, you know, are, has anyone discussed the leech as a possible um, location for such a plaza? I What I would say is everything's on the table right now. So I think uh, definitely people talked about um, the river, um, you know, kind of that, that area, um, you know, between um, basically the leech in between the convention center. I don't know if the leech was specifically talked about, but again, this is extremely preliminary. So, I mean, I think that that could be added to, you know, what would that look like? Um, I think his recommendations were definitely kind of like that tie to downtown. So, you know, we were, I think, looking a little bit more on how does, you know, how do we get from like the hotel convention center, you know, downtown that way. But that doesn't mean that the leech wouldn't be a viable, um, great option. So I don't know if that answers just, your question. Yeah, Ray, go ahead. I could just jump in because uh, the mayor and I had a brief conversation about this. And one of the, the biggest concern about the leech is, if you're familiar with it, there's paver bricks out in front of the stage area. Because when we were looking at sites to put the, um, the ice rink that we now have at Roe Park, we decided it would have been a great site down there, but we have to have stakes going to the ground to keep the walls of the ice rink obviously sturdy. Um, the leach is built on a landfill, a lot of contaminated soils that have been capped. So for us to do major renovation down there may be nearly impossible, um, just because if we want to have a splash pad or water feature type feature, and then uh, underground chiller unit to make sure the ice rink is there. You're talking about a lot of things underground that may preclude the leach from being a, a site. I'm not gonna say we can't keep it out there, but that one may be an issue of it can't happen because of the, the contaminated soils and, and other things underground there. So, but it's definitely, I agree, Mayor, it's, you know, it's there. Could it have been used or could potential um, if some of those, you know, contaminated issues weren't there.
And also I wanted to say, we've only had one meeting so far, um, you know, with, with kind of this group. So city staff sort of went back to kind of look at, um, you know, are there some buildings that, you know, are perhaps for sale um, that could, um, you know, part of my big dream, I guess, is, you know, is it possible to get rid of uh, or to, you know, if there's kind of an area that maybe is a problem, could that problem be solved with something great? Um, so really kind of trying to think big picture about where this, you know, where this could potentially go. Um, you know, there's um, cities that have done very small, cities that have done very big. Um, so, you know, there's um, a lot that would need to, um, you know, go into this. So, you know, I think any recommendations that you have, um, you know, feel free to send those to Ray, um, you know, obviously and or me, but, um, it, and we can just add those kind of to the list of, of, I guess, you know, where we're looking right now. I really like the idea personally, and I, uh, if you're anyone's familiar with what's going on and me and other uh, doing a very similar project, I would say with their ice skating rink slash kind of uh, uh, outdoor space for the, for the summer. So I, I do think we'll probably start seeing these a lot more and it gets to that point of kind of creating an active downtown year round and I'd, I'd like to see the the downtown in the winter be a little bit more vibrant. Yeah, and I mean, that's such a great point. Um, we, this is not a new concept. It's not like he just thought this would just be wonderful and hush, gosh, he actually consulted with Nina. And I think we had people say to us, um, well, does it look like we're doing the same thing as Nina? And the bottom line is it doesn't really matter because we want to keep people here and um, it's a great idea and it's a great, you know, I think a lot of people felt like if we couldn't do this winter part, you know, the winter part is really the big thing we're missing, right? Like having something that could be programmed from, let's just say, you know, October 31st or I don't know, November 1st or something to March, you know, you can, you can keep this ice skating rink open so much longer um, and, and you can actually program it. And I think it gives people... Um, you know, having skate rental just gives the access. Um, I think we were getting there, you know, like we've been inching along with the rinks that we've been doing and they've been awesome, but it's just, um, you can't really rely on it. You can't rely on the weather. So um, that, you know, that definitely is, is exciting. I know Ray and Chad will be really sad um, to not have to rely on the weather with the ice rink. <laughs> <laughs> Because somehow it's like January, it'll be, you know, 75 and then it's below zero for, you know, two weeks and then it just goes like that. So I just have one comment, Amy, to the to the presentation, which I thought is great uh, coming from them. Yeah, but I know this is a brief and probably a, a cut down version of the whole presentation. But was there much connectivity to the southern part, uh, like down in the, the new sawdust district and stuff like that connectivity to the downtown at all from that end? No, no, not really. Um, I think, you know, I think one thing to remember is this is one person's perspective. You know, this is, well, it's, it's him and his wife and he's, you know, he's an, an expert. Um, he doesn't really, like he said, he wasn't told anything before he came here. So it's not like he really knows, um, you know, what the Sawdust District is going to be. That being said, um, he really did talk a lot about like Oregon, Oregon Street and, tying that in. So he kind of understood that we have a bigger picture there. So he talked a lot about, um, like he really liked Rhapsodies and he was, you know, um, like I said, he went to Pete's Garage and he thought that there were some great stores on um, Oregon Street. So he he understood that. So I think it's it's kind of, kind of part of that big picture. But I think his big thing is you've got to get people down there. You've got to give people a reason. So I think once you create that it, it sort of spirals off like everybody can use that as sort of a marketing tool like hey come ice skating and then come check out my antique store on oregon street or come have an ice cream cone at rhapsody's you know what i mean so i think those areas can can benefit too um but he really didn't he really didn't go into that he did talk about um the outlet mall and just you know the out, outlet malls you know our outlet mall is uh, not you know perfect right now and he just you know said that's happening across the country um you know that's not uncommon to to your city um i mean i felt like he genuinely thought oshkosh was um 
really amazing. Um, and he said, I usually try to, he's like, I come to some places and he's like, it's hard for me to come up with, you know, some, there's just so many opportunities. And um, I think he felt that we had so much to build on. So um, I think we can be really proud of that. And he, he just, he loved the parks. He loved South Park. Um, he really loved Rainbow Park. He, I mean, really just it, it went on and on about the parks. So I think, um, you know, I look at that as an opportunity to use that, um, you know, when you're looking for park, park funding, and <laughs> Ray's heard me say this too, but, you know, this is, I mean, it's, it's quality of life, it's tourism, it's, it's attracting new people. I mean, parks are, you know, part of that whole thing. So, so Amy, then as far as the parks advisory board, um, this is an invitation uh, for this board to um, give input to uh, this plan and, and Ray, is it your thought or Amy, um, your thought that this would go on our kind of regular outstanding issues for um, regular input, or is it a one and done? We get one shot to give input. What, what, what's the expectation of PAB? You know, I would see this, um, as Amy said, we've only met once and this presentation was back in, was it June already? Amy, when yep. we got this? So it's a process where I think we'll continue to work with the other city staff and some of the stakeholders. I think the next step will be coming up with those six or 10 or 12 potential sites and then sharing those with the board and saying, all right, here are some of the sites that we've identified here. I think we're going to come up with a list of pros and cons um, and share those with you. So I think the, the plaza is probably the biggest, um, biggest project. I think that's really gaining momentum and I think an interest from the community. Um, again, the river walk signs, something that was in our budgets already been going down um, as far as down the road uh, for purchasing. So um, those, you know, we'll report when they're up. I would hope they're either going to be up yet this year or by next spring. Um, but no, I, I see this as coming back and, and getting you in the loop on it. Because again, if somebody right now says we don't want to see this happening in Opera House Square, I think we want to know about that so that we can relay that to our, our small group. Yeah, and I think we're we're kind of trying to talk to groups. Um, there's definitely, I think, going to need to be, um, you know, a private, public type funding um, for this. So, um, I think there are definitely some donors that would be interested in supporting something like this. So, you know, there's just a lot of that kind of back of the house trying to figure out, you know, is this even a possibility, and what does it look like, and you know, all of that. So, any feedback I think is is great. Um, at, at this point, so, and like I said, I will send the link to the to the whole presentation and um, you can kind of see the other things that he talked about too. All right, so I thought great presentation, Amy. I, I, I really liked it. Hi, Amy. Um, <laughs> the stuff I love driving home and seeing events happening actually in the square because I drive by it all the time um, and it just makes the whole downtown just seem more alive and more active. Um, so I love the idea that in his, well, the, you guys are just starting out, but I think one of the things is, is parking. One of the things that you guys are looking at to be able to expand parking so more people come downtown. I think that's that's kind of a hindrance for some people. Is that in the plan or not? Yeah, I mean, he definitely talks about parking. Um, you know, he thinks uh, to a degree that, you know, there's a walking issue, not a parking issue. So, you know, he talks about like, you know, if you're at Walmart, like people will be willing to walk, you know, pretty far from, you know, the back of a parking lot. Um, but he said it's a real issue. And I think that that's something that this, the city um, looks at pretty, pretty often um, with, you know, what kinds of, you know, opportunities are there with parking. I, I think at the end of the day, if you have a destination that people are that's worth going to, people will park. So if you picture like the Bucks game, you know, you're going to a Bucks game in downtown Milwaukee, you are parking far away. You know, you're just, you just are. And nobody, you don't really hear anybody talk about that. We don't really hear any complaints necessarily on farmer's market days because people are really excited, you know, to go to the farmer's market. So I, I it, it definitely comes up. It definitely comes up in his presentation. Um, probably almost to the contrary a little bit, like where he says, don't be afraid to take parking away. And he said, everybody's, you know, every city goes through this. So, you know, I don't think we have to feel like Oshkosh is alone in our, you know, parking challenges and, and that kind of thing. But um, I think it's, it's a good point. It's a, it's a, it's a good point. Well, I, and I have noticed that 
the downtown businesses, we get calls, like if people are having special events or something going on, and they ask, can we park in your parking lot? And if it works, if it's in later hours, if it's on weekends or something, we'll, we always make we always make do, um, and we try to help out as much as we can. And then it goes the reverse way. If we ever need help, people are always really uh, able to, to help us out. So That's um, awesome. Yeah, so it's just, yeah, parking is just, it's an issue because I get calls pretty regularly going, can we park in your lot when we're, or people, you know, on, on Saturdays when they go to the farmer's market, you know, if they get pushed out far enough, they'll start filling up in our lot, which which I don't mind because I think the farmer's market's a cool thing. So, all right. <laughs> Thanks, Amy. Thank Thanks. So cool. Any, anything else before we move on? Well, I just wanted to add, I think it's a, it's a great plan and super exciting, but um, just to give Amy, I mean, you do an amazing job. You do an amazing job um, just for the community as a whole and promoting all these awesome opportunities we have, and we can only grow on that. And um, I just, I love to see your posts and follow your posts because you just put so much into it and, you know, taking different people involved and you just do a really great job. So um, that helps, you know, that helps too, that helps spread the parks and the events and everything else that's happening in the community, um, private and public. I mean, you just do amazing job. So just want to tell you that. Thank you. I think our parks are one of our best assets. So you guys make it pretty easy. <laughs> All right, Amy and Jody, unless you're <laughs> sticking out. Um, yeah, I'll tune in on TV. I'll, I'll tune you guys in on Oshkosh Media. <laughs> All right, thanks, Amy. All right, thank you. Bye. All right, well, now we're moving into some old business. Um, we had a discussion previously about the Gulf War Memorial. So we had um, some questions. Ray, do you have some more updates on that? Um, I'm gonna turn it over to Bill. Bill's been working with uh, Mr. Cannon from the Vietnam's Vets, and I believe he's joining us via phone so that he can help give some clarification to questions that you might have. So Bill, why don't you kick it off? Okay, thank you, Ray. Um... I, yeah, I think I see Mr. Cannon there, so uh, um, welcome. Um, the last meeting, there were a few questions uh, regarding the text on the uh, proposed uh, Gulf War, War on Terrorism Memorial. And uh, so, Mr. Cannon, would you like to weigh in on that, please? I think you're on mute, sir. Can't, can't hear you, Dwayne. I'm not able to unmute him either, so. And not. Uh, Dwayne, can you uh, can you unmute? How, how about if we move to the next one, Dwayne? We're gonna when you get unmuted, if you chime in, we'll be able to come back and know that you're with us. Um, Did you say my name? Kevin, was that you? Yes. Can you hear me? We can, yes. Hey, Amy, let's move on to the next one, I think. And um, Dwayne, if you want to keep trying to unmute, and we'll hear okay. you come in. All right, so we'll move on to the placement of the George Washington Tri the sign for the Liberty Elm Tree. And this one I'm going to turn over to Bill. Mr. Hagelin from the uh, Wisconsin Soci Society Sons of the American Revolution was going to be here. And Bill, I, I'm not seeing him, but do you know if he was planning to join us? I uh, I believe he was. We uh, we have not heard from him today. Um, the status of that uh, item um, per last month is um, 
I think the mayor asked if we had contacted the Miller's Bay Neighborhood Association regarding that uh, concept of placing a plaque uh, near the Liberty Elm tree that was donated by the Sons of the American Revolution. And the Miller's Bay neighborhood uh, indicated that they were not in favor of placing a sign there. So that's really the only update I have. Um, we had proposed that um, early on that they um, utilize a plaque similar to what we use for memorial trees. Uh, however, um, you know, they preferred to utilize the provided plaque, um, but, uh, you know, we're hoping to reach some sort of a resolution to install that plaque, but, um, you know, hearing from the neighbors and, uh, and some of those uh, who commented at the last park board meeting, it, uh, um, I guess I'll turn it back to the board and see if you have any further thoughts or discussion on that. What was the reasoning behind them saying they didn't want the sign, the neighborhood? Uh, the neighborhood um, felt that it should be similar to other memorial tree plaques that we currently use. Um, some of those, uh, or at least one of those individuals had been involved um, in the park board uh, way back um, when the memorial tree program uh, had begun. And at that time, there was considerable debate about uh, what was acceptable for a plaque at that time. And um, at, they determined that um, our current um, 11 by 15 or whatever size that is, uh, would be the standard. And so um, they, the Miller's Bay Neighborhood Association, based on that information, felt that uh, they would like to stay with what was, uh, you know, our standard for, you know, 20 years, 20 plus years. Well, since Mr. Hagland is not here, um, I'm wondering, is this something that we may want to consider tabling to the next meeting? I was just going to suggest that to the board or you can make your decision. I'll make a motion. I'll, I'll make a motion that we table this item to the next meeting. Second. Stacy, you got that? Are you for a roll call then, Ray? Yep. Yes. Okay. I just want to make sure we were ready for the roll call. All right. Bartel. Aye. Davis. Aye. Royal. No, I'm sorry. I'm oh, Hudak, rather. Sorry. Here or I. Sorry. <laughs> Matt. Aye. Aye. Paul, Paul Mary. Aye. All right. Um, and then we go to our alternate Stevenson. Aye. Challenger. Aye. All right. Motion passed eight to zero then. All right, we will reach out to him and encourage him to be at our next meeting, hopefully. Mr. King, I just want to check real quick. Mr. Cannon, are you, did you find the mute, unmute? No? It should be at the bottom of your computer. At least it is on mine. Well, we will let you keep trying. Uh, we still can't hear you. So, Amy, let's keep going. And Mr. Cannon, if you get it, just chime in again. All right. That means we're moving on to some new business. <clears throat> and the first order of new business is discussing the Chief Oshkosh Sign Plaque Project. I will, um, I'm going to kick this off. And we do have um, John Fitzpatrick. <laughs> And I believe Michelle Benke, uh, John and Michelle have been teaming up as the staff liaisons for the diversity, equity, inclusion committee meetings. Um, so they've been uh, involved in some of the discussions at uh, that committee. 
But I think um, the memo that I included in your packet from John Fitzpatrick dated May 12th of this year, I think gives you a good um, understanding or some of the background. Um, this is a project that former mayor um, Cummings um, was very interested in. Um, he had received a donation from um, a community member to go towards um, updating some of the information around the Chief Oshkosh Man Monument. Um, again, just looking at the memo, I'll just highlight a few things, and then I'll ask um, John or Michelle to chime in if there's anything I missed. But the monument was erected in 1911, um, largely through the efforts of Colonel John Hicks. Um, it's, it's maintained actually through the Hicks Trust, um, which is um, set up within the city for maintaining municipal sculptures and monuments throughout the city of Oshkosh. And the trust is actually administered by the, the library board. So um, if Bill or I, or somebody from our staff notice something that needs to be addressed on one of the statues, we actually have to contact the library director and have them put it on an agenda for the board to consider. Um, the former mayor um, contacted members of the Menominee tried, tribe in order to uh, get some of their input on this project. Uh, in response to that, um, they formed a Chief Oshkosh Monument Project Committee, and the committee members are listed in that memo, uh, members from the tribe, uh, members from the university, Wisconsin Humanities Council. Um, and what, what they're really looking at doing is um, providing a modern, historically accurate interpretation of the Chief Oshkosh history and so forth. Um, so in the top, uh, it's about the second paragraph on the second page, talks about the five different um, plaques or signs that they would like to incorporate. Um, a biographical plaque on the south side of the statue, a statesman plaque on the east side, a steward plaque on the west side, a land plaque on the north side, and a meta plaque on the south side of the, of the statue. A um, couple months back, the, um, the Diversity, Equity, Inclusion Committee um, had discussion of this project and feel strongly about moving forward the concept of, of providing further information, signage plaques um, around the monument. And they actually drafted a resolution that they will be forwarding to the council, asking for the council to support the concept as well. And I believe we have at least um, Dr. Manning, I believe, is on the meeting. Um, Dr. Pasquale Manning, Assistant Professor of English at the University of Wisconsin Oshkosh. And like I said, John and Michelle are here. So at this time, um, we provided information to you. We provided the resolution along with the um, information that uh, they're recommending be included on the signs. Um, John or Michelle, would you have anything that I might have missed that you want to add? I see John, but I don't see Michelle. Oh, there's, I'm sorry, Michelle. Anything you want to add? No, I think you did a pretty good job summarizing it, Ray. I don't have anything to add. Okay. So we're here asking for the board to uh, consider the, the idea. And uh, if there's questions, we can try to answer those. Do you want, um, do you want Dr. Manning to speak or do you have any questions first of all? I guess just a quick question, Ray. Um, I it looks like maybe a couple of pieces of that memo got left off that had um, a little bit of a, a mapping of the site. But I think most of our board members are familiar with the layout uh, or the um, the site. Uh, just I guess would point out that um, I believe in John's memo, John Fitzpatrick's memo. You know there was a an attachment that had described some cataloged area um, that the signs or that could not go into and in this committee a number of years back had kind of already dealt with that with the um, walkway the ADA the um, uh, ADA accessible walkway and that so uh, unfortunately I, I didn't see that in the packet for for folks to kind of uh, be aware I guess yeah, that, that area basically is the area within the inside of that perimeter walk. Um, so for us to do any improvements or 
um, erecting of things in there is, is almost prohibited. We'd have to um, get some further permissions on that. So I think, you know, one of, I think the idea that's been floated around is um, to hopefully place these items outside or on the backside of the perimeter. And we'd like to do that as well. So it has access for um, those ADA accessible reasons, wheelchairs, strollers, whatever that might be. Do we have pictures of what they're supposed to look like? Are they just the standard like information boards you see? At That's from what I understand that will be forthcoming. I think right now we're looking for the um, the concept of moving this forward and then having final discussion on what the signs will look like or what that may be. And Dr. so Manning, all the verbiage on the that is um, was given to us. That's been okayed by the tribe. Doctor Manning, I'm going to have you jump in now. Hi everyone. My name is Pascal Manning. Uh, I'm in the English department at UWO. So yes, uh, the, all of the language was composed by um, really by committee. You know, it's composed by myself along with uh, Dave Brignon, who is the Tribal Historic Preservation Officer. And it was a product of a lot of different conversations uh, that Arnold Chevalier was very heavily involved in. So Arnold Chevalier is a citizen of the Menominee, and he is the third person on this, uh, this now committee of three, which began with a lot more people and has gotten smaller over the years. So the language is has gone through a lot of different processes of review with the tribe. It was in their hands for a lot of months and uh, it was sort of passed around and talked about uh, at a lot of different levels, even within the tribal historic preservation office. Um, and so the language that we have is, is certainly approved uh, and, and in some ways, you know, co-authored by the tribe. Dr. Manning, can you speak to, because um, I've heard different ideas on what might be placed there. Is it the intent that it would be signage that um, we have, you know, for example, we've got some historic signage along the river walk that, uh, that we work with a, a vendor on, and we've got some historic signage in our parks. Is that something similar to what you'd be looking at? Yes, I, I think our uh, proposal, we had a little image in our PowerPoint that we presented to the DEI committee back in April. And our proposal was for some version of a traditional historical marker. And so I think ideally we imagined uh, things in bronze cast just because they are so durable and require so little maintenance. Um, we'd envisioned uh, something that can accommodate the number of characters that we have in the individual signs. So, you know, our longest sign is 283 words. Um, so, you know, <laughs> There, but it's still a long text. And so we were looking at signage that would show the language in good relief um, and that would, you know, that that would be uh, accessible to all different kinds of readers. And so we imagine something standing on a, a wooden or a metal pillar, uh, somehow affixed, but a traditional flat sign. And uh... If I'm understanding the, the park board's role right here, we're just, we're agreeing to the concept of updating these signs and then where they're being placed, right? I mean, we're not here to, I, I guess, critique any language of any kind. We're just here in concept to agree to this. That's kind of the idea. Say on our, for us and, and our perspective, agreeing with the project conceptually um, mm -hmm. and what we would do, this is something else where we bring an update back to the board saying we're working with, um, whoever we're going to work with, whether it's DEI or um, whoever that might be on that on that design and come back with a final project, basically. Sure. Any, any other board members have thoughts or input? Um, I'll, uh, I'll just say thank you. Um, to the folks who kind of worked on this, I, I think it's a much needed uh, update to the to the signage there. Um, uh, it would be nice to nice to nice to have something that 
that uh, feels, you know, feels, feels worth, you know, kind of worth, uh, worth, you know, worth reading and sharing. And, uh, um, you know, as we kind of tell the story and the history of, uh, you know, what's, what's here, what's been here and, and maybe what will be. So um, I, I, yeah, I mean, I'm, you know, I support the moving forward, m moving forward. And I think that's great. Ditto. I also support moving forward with the project and um, you know, learning more as they go on. So we have a motion then. Um, if you prefer, you can do a motion or we can state it as a consensus of the board. Um, your preference. Because it's a concept, I guess, maybe saying cons that we're. Um, the consensus of the board was to go ahead with the project. I think once it comes back fully, um, maybe that's when we'd say, yes, we fully recommend and support this. Yep, I agree. Agree. Agreed. Yeah. Okay, so we'll make sure the minutes reflect that. Thank you. If I could just clarify one, one moment before we move on, it, it was my understanding that um, the the board would make a recommendation to council to move this project forward. Um, Ray, did did I understand you to say that you're expecting something to come back? I would, well, I, I don't know, not sure where we're getting that. It's stated that the board would make the recommendation. Um, I would say because of the uncertainty right now on what's going out there, I would say it's going to come back to this board once, whether it's a sign or a plaque or whatever that might be to make sure that this board is comfortable with, with what's going out there. I think we've agreed to, and I think uh, Dr. Manning has, has said, yes, we agree. It's gonna be on the outside perimeter of the, the walkway, um, but having something concrete come back here with what the final design looks like, I think is appropriate. Are you good with that, Dr. Manny? Yes, certainly. I, I'm more than happy to um, to meet with this committee. Should it be appropriate to talk about uh, the project in at, at any level? You know, I'd be happy to talk about the language on the plaques to talk about how we've how we've come to the suggestion to position the plaques where we've proposed that they might go. Um, and I know the same is true for for Dave Grignot and Arnold Chevalier. We would be happy to furnish the committee with whatever information they need um, to, to, to feel that they have a full understanding of what, of what we're pr proposing to do. But um, other than that, I don't feel like I have anything really to, to add at this stage. Is there a, uh, a conditional approval of some kind we can do? I mean, uh, we just talked about the standards that we put for plaques for trees. Is there similar standards for something like this that we can say we conditionally approve this given that it follows X, Y, Z. I, I don't want to overcomplicate things, but I also don't want to slow down the project. Um, that I think is the discussion that we need to have um, with the okay. committee a little bit further. Um, I think they have been talking more about a bronze plaque type and um, you know, depending on how that gets mounted and the size of it based on the number of, of words, like Dr. Manning had said, um, we do have, again, those historic signs along the river walk that I think um, are very nicely done. And, um, you know, we do, I wouldn't say it's a, a template or a measure, but it is something that if we wanna try to remain consistent um, with something that's out there already. But I think at this point, giving the consensus that we're supporting the concept, moving it forward, um, unless somebody strongly feels right now that either a bronze, bronze plaque is good, not good, um, we're trying to match something on the parks. I just think it's maybe a little too early um, until we get a chance to put some of that together. All right, we will make sure our minutes accurately reflect that consensus of the board then. Thank you. All right, moving on to the River East Neighborhood Association, um, installing a gazebo at Riverside Park. 
All right, I am going to pull up what we gave you in the packet shortly. Um, I do have Alexa from our planning division on the meeting as well. Alexa um, coordinates um, applications for the grant funding from neighborhood associations um, to do projects within the city. Um, ultimately, those go to the Common Council for approval. Um, and one of the projects that was submitted recently for consideration by the River East Neighborhood Association was to install a gazebo in Riverside Park. Um, a little history on Riverside Park. Um, up until about roughly 11 years ago, when the Riverwalk started to be constructed down there, uh, the the park was um, renovated and the parking lot was renovated. Uh, there were two gazebos in the park which were removed. Um, they were older gazebos that probably needed to be removed, um, not only for the improvements but because of their condition. Um, so this is something that the neighborhood would like to see in essentially one of their neighborhood parks to be able to be used. Uh, for the neighbors, um, come down to the park, have a picnic lunch or whatever that might be. Um, in the discussion, um, they have talked to the convention center staff um, and hotel staff. Um, they support the idea. They see the possible use for um, when they have some weddings there potentially and for photo ops and so forth. Um, so I had invited Kathy Webb, the, um, uh, the representative from the neighbor association, but she was gonna be out of town and we couldn't find a substitute. Uh, so this is something we're aware of. Um, we do support it and wanted to uh, bring it to this board um, just to show if there's support here by the board before the council does um, take up the idea. Let me just so the public's aware about what we're speaking of. So here's a map of, here's the convention center. Hopefully you can see the cursor moving around. Riverside parking lot. Um, we already have these pedestrian connections going down to the river walk and up to the sidewalk and back at convention center. Right now there's a tree located here that Bill Sturm, I believe has on his list for removal because it's uh, dead, dying. Um, so our proposal would be to put it somewhere in this area we would also include as part of the project an accessible walkway coming off of the existing um, walkway to make sure we had ADA compliance. So in general, this is the area that we're speaking of. Um, the, the neighborhood association had considered in their application asking for two gazebos, one to be located here and one further down at um, near the leach in Riverside Park, but due to uh, funding availability, um, they were told that at this point, they might only be funding for one, and they suggested this location be the site. So I'm here for questions and Alexa is still here. Um, here. Well, my only concern, and of course this is not really great to say about Oshkosh, but the, the homeless population down there is huge. And the chances are is they're just gonna take over that gazebo and it's not gonna be able to be used for weddings, you know, pictures and everything. There is, um, years back, the, um, the city did approve more of that green space being part of the convention center lease. So if they do have an event going on and there is somebody else using the shelter, they can request that they um, move from there because it's actually, it's still on park, but it's considered as part of their um, lease area. So there are, there's ways that whether it's the homeless population or somebody else, if, um, if it's being utilized that um, our department or the convention center staff can work on that. Um, and and you're right, um, Becky. But you know that's a, a bigger um, bigger issue that the whole city is is working on, and not just the city, but the county. And um, I know the council has been working on a number of different ideas and options to try to to work with some of those issues as well. Ray, did I understand that the leech is currently? completely fenced off unless there is an event because of issues around like vandalism and misuse? 
That's correct. Um, right now we have the gates locked because when we had it open starting the year, um, we had a number of issues that our staff was dealing with on a daily basis that um, we just could not continue to, to spend time on cleaning up and, and doing things that um, were requiring us to, to spend the time. So at this point, until things get better or we can open it up for a period of time when we don't have those issues, Yes, it is currently secured. So is it the thought that the gazebo, if not, I mean, I'm trying to understand. So if this is going to be located on leased property that's leased to the convention center, but the convention center has control over when it's available, is it thought that this is not going to be open to the public continuously like the gazebo, for example, at Menominee Park? Maybe I'm misunderstanding what the gazebo actually is. Yeah, it's it's not under the convention center's direction when it's available or who it's available to. If they intend to use it for one of their events, they will need to call and advise us or let us know um, when it will be potentially used. Same thing with the gazebo down at Menominee Park. If somebody specifically wants to use that, they they work with our department to do so. Alexa, as long as you hear, is there anything I missed that you would like to add? Just besides that, uh, this is a project from the Great Neighborhoods Program, which is a program that I administer and it's open to neighborhood associations. And so the River East Neighborhood did apply for it and they have indicated that they want a gazebo there for a number of years. So also, did you explain their commitment to the parks and how they help clean up the trash cans and how they'll definitely take care of the area because they've demonstrated that in the past? I didn't, if you would like to, you can feel free to. Okay, so I know that River East does, um, what would you call it, Ray, like a adopt a trash can type program adopt, thing? Adopt a site program. Yeah, so they help during, um, Throughout the year, they help and they come and they empty the trash cans that are at Riverside Park. I know that they have developed relationships with the people who do hang out there, including people who fish, people who might be um, lingering there for the day. They have com committed to kind of becoming neighborly to them. So I know that we will have eyes and volunteers on that park and the gazebo if it does get added. So I do feel confident in the neighborhood's um, commitment to this project. I think it's fantastic that River East neighbors came together in agreement on um, adding an asset to not just their neighborhood, but you know, one of our city parks and um, I'll be supporting this. It looks like a nice spot. Ray, is that where the old ice rink was? Is that kind of in that same area right there? Would you be able to see it off the bridge? Um, we should be able to see it. Yes, it's not in the same location as the ice rink. We're on the other side of that walkway from where the ice rink was. Okay. I think it'll look nice. Light it up. It'll it'll be a, a nice little site out there on that park. Yep, I also support the gazebo going going back over there. It was nice when it was there. On this one, I would I would enjoy a motion to the council showing support for the project. I move support for the project. Well, I start. Second. Again, Lauren. Yes, um, if we could, like the previous item, also see kind of a final um, visual on this yep. before it goes to council, uh, um, just for consistency's sake. I won't say you're going to see it before it goes to council because it still needs to be designed. So what we will do is bring that final design to you. So the funding gets approved before we can start designing anything. Was there a second and a motion and a second? I'm sorry, I lost place. 
Okay, Stacy, yeah, if you um, Lester had made the motion. Yeah, I am. But Lester made the motion and Lauren Bartelt had seconded it. Okay. And it looks like, unfortunately, Devin was kicked out of the meeting. So we are down for that person. So I'll do the roll call then. Bartelt. Aye. Davis. Aye. Matt. Aye. Millet. Aye. Paul Mary. Aye. Stevenson. Aye. Challenger. Aye. And it looks like Devin, you may be back or you um vote I or day. Devin said aye. All right. Motion passed then eight to zero. Thank you. All right. Well, our last piece of new business is discussing our meetings being virtual or returning to in person. All right. Um, as I said, in my memo, the council has a meeting tomorrow night where they will be discussing council rules as well as rules for boards and commissions. Um, I think up until a couple of weeks ago, it may have been. Um, considered to have all boards and commissions coming back in person um, September sometime soon. Um, but I think the council may have some discussion tomorrow night about possibly leaving that up to boards and commissions based on the increasing numbers um, locally. So I will, um, I think the best thing for us to do is find out from the board what their preference is tonight. And if the council makes some decision tomorrow night that might affect that, we can definitely let you know. But um, we're open to hearing everybody's thoughts and comfort level. And I, I just want to add to this discussion that one of the other boards and commissions um, had come back in person, but is choosing for their next meeting to meet virtually and uh, ran that by the city manager. He has no issue if you know, at 1 point in time, we come in person if we need to, um, unless. Council goes a different direction tomorrow evening, at least at this point, um, you know, if the need arises to, uh. Detour back to virtual just wanted to share that. Thoughts, preferences. I'd like I'm good back. either way. So I'd like to be back in person. I struggle with my technology at home and all the people that live here. <laughs> and it is nice to be in person and see people. But I'll do whatever is consensus. Um, for me, it'll probably be a little easier to do virtual. I, I've got a, uh, a child who's just in here who is unvaccinated. And a wife who works uh, works at a hospital in a hospital setting and often takes care uh, of patients with COVID. So um, for me, it might be might have easier access uh, over the next few months, especially if the if the you know number if transmission stays high and things like that in our community. Yeah, I agree. I think um, I am eager to be back in person. The tech technology issues can be a challenge, but at the same time, I think, you know, um, being able to be flexible, like Mayor was saying, and recognizing that transmission rates are going back up, it just makes more sense, I think, to be safer rather than not. But Lester, that's well, I'm okay either way. Um, I know in the past we did, it was I hate to say hybrid, but yeah, I mean, whoever wanted to come in could come in and. They're, they're, they won't allow a hybrid that gets too, um. Too much technology and IT wise, so at this point, they're saying it's 1 way or the other, unless something changes tomorrow night, which. Um, right now, they're we're being told. So. But I think there's 
if there's some members that aren't able to, um, I think to keep us all together, it's probably easier to do hybrid or to do um, online than it is um, in person. Can I suggest we do September and see how things go over the next month and have a decision then? I think that's yes. a good strategy. Perfect. Let's have a drop. The rates are going to drop like crazy, right? There you go. Let's use the parks board as an example, and we want to meet in uh, what, October in person. So are, if everybody's comfortable, I think plan for one more virtual. If something would happen to change tomorrow night where that decision needs to be reversed, we'll definitely make let you be known about. Yeah, okay. I support I support as continuing virtual until um, we're all comfortable, or at least the majority are comfortable going back in person. Sounds okay. like it. All right, moving on to staff reports. Ray, you are up again. I am going to keep it brief, hopefully. Um, first item is to report Ray, on our. Can I interrupt for a second? I, I sure. have Dwayne on the phone. Um, okay. I could maybe try to patch him through to the mic just through my phone. You'd like to hear from him now? Board, you good with that? Yeah. Okay, let's see how it works, Bill. All right, that's gonna be iffy, but Dwayne. Okay, I'm gonna if you could speak up as loud as you can. Um, I'll just patch you directly through here. So, um, here's Dwayne, everybody. No, it's not gonna work, Bill. Okay. We'll have to bring them back again next month, so let's stick with that at this point. Um, Do we need a motion to table that item as well? We did not. Yes, that would be appropriate. Yeah, I think we're giving him time, so I think let's plan for that. Does somebody like to make that motion? So moved. Second by somebody. Second. Is that seconded? Yes. Okay. All right. Um, all right. Bartelt. Aye. Davis. Aye. Hudak. Matt? Aye. I think you were calling me, so I. Aye. Aye. <laughs> Call me. Uh, Stevenson? Yes. Yep. I'm Challenger? Aye. Thank you. Motion passed 8 to 0. So the first item on my report is um, letting you see the renderings of our exciting new parks admin operations facility that we are currently designing. Um, this is a project that the council has agreed to fund over three years, starting this year with um, getting the design moving, construction next year into the following 2023. So this, um, is a rendering from our architect that we're working with. It's the same architect that had designed the um, streets, the field operations facility across the street from us. So what you're seeing here is a visual basically from the corner of uh, Witzel and Idaho. Um, you're seeing the there's some front parking for customers, front entryway, um, area that takes advantage of some natural lighting. And then back in here is um, a lot of our storage and our vehicle fleet storage and maintenance. And then these two renderings just gives you a shot basically looking in from uh, Witzel if you're driving by. And this is the back, oops, 
This is a back view. Basically, this would be the south side of our building. This would be our west side. Um, really showing doors for our trucks to enter into. Uh, most of these are service bays, wash bay, and some storage unit, uh, truck parking. And this mezzanine is actually available for us for all of our storage of special event equipment, other things that uh, we have stored in our various sites across the city we can centralize and, and get into our facility. Um, just to give you an update on the progress so far, we, we took the, um, again, these conceptuals to the plan commission for a workshop last month. Um, they support the project and moving it forward, continuing to work on design and bringing it back to the plan commission uh, for the final approvals before we start getting into awarding of the bids. Um, tentative schedule, we are looking at, um, we're gonna have to relocate our staff, um, administrative staff, as well as our field staff. We are working on uh, proper locations for those, um, but we're looking at having those relocations done late winter, early spring next year um, with the existing building uh, being demolished and then construction starting possibly around mid April, um, looking at possibly about a year of construction. So moving in probably the 1st part of 2023. Ray, um, is it thought that uh, sustainability would have a pass at this as well? I would say yes, we'll be sharing it uh, with the sustainability board as well. Any questions or else I'm just gonna stop sharing because I don't think I need to for the nailer. Um, sorry, I'm losing track of where I'm at here. All right, so the next item is um, part of the zoo plan called for a black bear exhibit um, we have been contacted by some community members and donors that are interested in moving this project forward. So, um, we're working on getting a design for black bear. And as Chad and I talked about this, um, we have our, the Fox, um, that we, um, acquired recently also needs an exhibit. So we're looking at a combination separate exhibits. But being able to use the husbandry building for both animals. Um, so we're looking at a design for a building um, which would house uh, the husbandry for both black bear as well as fox and starting the design on that. And so um, we wanted to let you know that's our next project at the zoo that we're working towards. And we'll continue to work with um, the donors and keep you advised of that. Um, once we have any concept uh, designs or anything to share, we'll bring those forward to you as well and, and share those. But wanted to make sure that you're aware that we're working that, um, keeping the zoo moving forward on some of the new exhibits as well. So you don't actually have a black bear? No, that would be something we'd have to work on, just like we had to with the eagle and some of the other right. the animals we have, correct? Okay, thank you. So. Is the location for that intended to be that area to the south um, east of like where the Otter Building is? Where where would the Black Bear exhibit land? Uh, uh, that larger green space, I'd say southeast of the um, Eagle exhibit. That would be the location, and that's where it's called for in the master plan. So, got it. Thanks. Yep, that's it for me, Amy. Right. Well, the building looks great. It'll be really nice to have you in a, a nicer looking place. Thank you. All right, Chad. Well, a few updates for you. If you've been out and around the parks here to see some of the things that have been uh, taking place over the course of the year. Um, first off, uh, the South Park uh, tennis pickleball courts. Um, as of recently, just all the fence structures have been put up in a couple of weeks. We hope to have all the color coding done and uh, have that open by early September, which is the goal uh, going forward. Hopefully weather will cooperate with us going there. I think it'll be a highly used uh, facility similar to how Menominee Park was with the pickleball courts and things of that nature. So looking forward to seeing that 
project come fruition here uh, over the next month or so. Um, uh, the next one was be out at the West Haven Circle Park where we went through and did a complete reconstruction of a playground structure out there at accessible routes and uh, uh, resilient surfacing, uh, which has had a lot of great reviews from the community members out there that have utilized the park so far. In addition, we did the athlete, athletic field, uh, at the ball field renovation uh, this past year uh, that's doing well, but we're going to be doing some overseeding. Uh, we had some sensitive times with heavy rains after the seed process took place. Uh, then with high heat and humidity made it challenging to do reestablish for turf areas. So we'll be working on those again here some more in August and September when we have a good growing period. The only unfortunate part is these heavy rains such as today, we got one area of collection out there of stormwater where we have done some drain tile out there to make this work, but it's just not taking as much as we thought it would at this time. It's working, but the process for going on. So we might be looking at an inlet uh, or a couple of French drain inlets to put out there to help with the surface water out of that area. So we will be addressing that. In fact, we might be doing some pumping out there just to get the water away from that area uh, so we can address that. Let's hope the weather cooperates with us a little bit more too. Uh, going forward. So, but the site overall has taken shape out there very well. Uh, we look forward to long term use of people out there for the playground and the athletic field uh, as it goes forward here in the in the near future. I do plan to have that athletic field on our schedule of events for athletic field use next year. Uh, so hopefully things come in. We can get, get a good seed base going again here uh, for this fall. Uh, next one would be the hikers monument. If you've gone through and around the corner of uh, across from the museum in the pain, uh, working with the neighborhood group in regards to some projects down there uh, with the granite path, a new flagpole has been erected there, new lighting for the flagpole. And we also have a historic sign that will be done. Uh, we've also did some uh, mowing inside the woodlot around there as well and some cleanup around the hikers uh, uh, monument itself. So taking some shape through there with the with that park uh, has been a nice addition, and I hope that in the next week or so we'll get our file, our remaining historic sign up there uh, for people to view. Uh, the, you know the the purpose of the the uh, memorial in the long run. Uh, last one would be the um, uh, memorial bench program, and I guess I really didn't uh, uh, envision how well this program took off until getting into budget prep this year. Uh, we've had a, a lot of inquiries uh, and locations for the bench programs for both existing ones and for new ones going in, uh, which is great. Some of our park sites are starting to get filled up uh, from that end, and hopefully we can uh, offer these more as we go into the future uh, in different sites that might have, um, you know, an abundance of benches, such as Menominee Park, uh, for example. Um, but it's, a, it's been doing very well. I like hearing all the comments from people coming. I uh, like seeing them have their memorials out there, and I think it'll be a great program going forward here into the future. So looking forward to that and getting a few out. The only negative side for us is uh, the deliveries uh, for some of our orders for these have been delayed throughout the course of the year with COVID and manufacturing. Uh, so right now we're taking orders in 22, uh, hoping that our other ones received that were scheduled in early May or early spring that are supposed to be here in August and then another batch coming in um, probably in late October, early November. Uh, and our goal is to get all of our concrete work done in advance of these. So when these benches arrive, they can be installed uh, at their locations. So look for those to come out and hope to share some of those more as we get into the future and get those installed. So that's what I have for a report today. But if you have any questions or concerns, I can definitely take those. Just a quick question, Chad. Um, yes, I, I know that uh, there's a little bit of a delay opening up the wood shop, but I guess the question is, given that uh, the senior center does have that fantastic resource, um, was any thought or discussion given to locally made um, uh, benches uh, by, I don't know, volunteers with the wood shop or are these um, to be a resin material or concrete or what material are those uh, memorial benches? They're all steel uh, with a coating to them that uh, would do this are a little bit more durable for all season use. As uh, much as I enjoy wood benches or the what they call the Aldo Leopold type benches, they're great in certain settings, uh, but I think these are more permanent 
uh, and work with us on our accessible uh, accessible routes as well. So that's what we'll be going with. And actually, come to think of it, I do recall the one out by the Shoreland Restoration at Menominee that kind of gridded metal that's coated. Okay. Yes. That's what, okay. Thank mm -hmm. you. Yeah. All right. Well, moving on to Bill. Okay, I just wanted to update everybody on the Emerald Ash Borer situation. I think I explained um, at last meeting we had over 900 uh, trees that we will need to be removing. Um, this last winter, a lot of the Emerald Ash Borer uh, effects were, were pretty obvious. So uh, we've been working on uh, doing quite a few removals of those trees that we have not included in our uh, treatment program. Um, so we actually are going to, um, to uh, look for a contractor to help us out with some of that work as well. So we're hoping to um, expedite the process throughout the winter months, uh, try to get um, as many of those trees down as possible in a short amount of time. So as we don't uh, have any undue delay, any, any liability for the city with having those stand dead. We are also in the process of Injecting a lot of the trees that we have had on our uh, our list for preservation. Uh, a lot of these are uh, the higher quality trees that uh, um, we feel are in good enough structural condition to warrant treatment. So, um, treatment program is quite expensive. So we're we're trying to um, you know both remove trees that are in in very poor shape as well as try to preserve some of those that we feel. Are, are worthwhile and keeping around for a longer period of time. So that's uh, been moving along. Um, obviously, we've had a lot of other service work that kind of, you know, uh, slows us down a little bit too, but we've got a, a lot to take care of right now. So um, also the Memorial Tree Program has done very well this year. I have close to 30 orders um, for this year. We've uh, done a pretty good, um, spring planting and I have quite a few trees to install yet this fall. So that's been uh, very popular this year. I think um, people are understanding that we're losing a lot of trees in the parks and other areas and have uh, stepped forward and, and donated a lot of trees to replace those that we're losing. So um, you know, I think it's been a good program overall and it seems like every year it gets to be a little more popular and, and stronger. So we're we're very happy about that. and. Uh, the ability to install a lot of different species as well during that process and primarily in the south park which we lost quite a few trees there and um, also menominee park have been pretty popular locations too so uh, it's been a good program so we're very happy about that so that's pretty much all i have if anyone has any questions I'd be happy to entertain that all right thank you bill on to jenny all right, so just a couple updates on some of our um, events that we've been having here. Um, so our new brews on the bay this year, which we were supposed to have in um, 2020 to start off, which we moved to this year. So we've had two so far. The first one in June was really, really great. Um, we had a really big crowd. Um, people are just really loving the idea and spending you know, time out in the park. The second one we had, unfortunately, it got rained out, so we had to reschedule it. Um, and oftentimes, when things get rescheduled, um, you know, maybe not everybody gets the message, and we did not have quite as good of crowd as we did the first night. Um, it was certainly still a good meeting or a good um, crowd, but not anything like the first night. So we made some logistical changes after the first one just knowing kind of what kind of people and crowds we can have down there um so we made some changes in our registers and in our serving lines and serving um drinks off of both sides of the trailer so we've made a lot of really good um changes going into the next one so we're excited about that so unfortunately um that next one is this week on wednesday so we're crossing our fingers that 
um, the weather holds out, but the next two days really don't look great. So we'll see what happens with that. Um, we do have some backup plans in place. Um, if, you know, we should have to cancel um, with the band. So on Wednesday, it's supposed to be um, Copper Box Duo, which um, has a great following in Oshkosh. So we're really excited to have them, but we'll have to wait and see how the how the weather plays out. So, um, and then there's also one in September. So um, they, like I said, they've been great. People have really um, enjoyed them and we're excited to be offer them to the, to the community. Um, a lot of support from the local breweries and I think they've really enjoyed being a part of it as well. Um, so it's just all around been a, been a really good um, community event. So um, the next thing are Tuesday night concerts at the Leech. Um, we've had a good year so far with those two. Um, unfortunately, the first one of those was rained out. Um, so we weren't able to have that one. And that is rescheduled into September on September 14th. Um, our numbers have definitely been lighter than last year. Um, I just think it's a contributing factor of a lot of things. You know, we were able to bring the concerts back, but not have, you know, the bounce houses and the face painting and all the really close and personal things. Um, so I think, you know, there's certain families that really enjoy that. In fact, I know that there's families that really enjoy that. Um, so possibly that's why our numbers, you know, are a little bit lower and just still people the, you know, are apprehensive to come out with the COVID um, still. So, um, but we've, we've, they've been good. The bands have been great. Um, again, people have been having a good time, um, but our numbers have certainly been down um, compared to 2019 on those. So, um, and then last but not least, we have new um, kids camps at the pool this summer. And these were kind of brought on as an idea again to keep those smaller groups rather than having the big events where you have a lot of people. Um, so we started kids camps where you can, um, we have 20 people per session. So it's just, and we can split them up into groups of five or four. Um, it's just a more intimate type event. And those are still sponsored by Winnebago Community Credit Union. And um, they've been great. They, um, we have all different kinds of activities for the kids from, you know, tie dyeing t-shirts to making slime to making their own ice cream. Um, we spend some portion in the water as well. So this week right now, again, Unfortunately, we had to cancel this morning due to rain, um, but this week we have, it's the go for the gold is kind of the theme and it's for the older kids. Um, so from 10 to 13. Um, so we did one in June, which was for five to seven or June was three to five year olds. Um, and then the one in July we did for the six to nine year olds. And then this one is for 10 to 12 year, 10 to 13 year olds. So they've been, um, they've been great. I think in 20, um, 22 will certainly continue them. Um, and we, this kind of came on again with all the different changes and ideas for COVID. Um, so next year we'll have all the registration paperwork out early um, and all of our paperwork is finalized through legal and safety and all that stuff. So I think this is gonna be really great for the pool moving forward, um, doing these kids camps. Um, the people who have attended have really enjoyed them and we've gotten some really positive feedback. So something we'll definitely carry into to 2022 as well. So that's it for um, for those things. If anyone has any questions at all. I'll just make a quick comment. I was dropping granddaughter and friend off at the pool and picking them up last week. Um, it was great to see the kids having a good time and um, it was a hot day and I know that water felt good. I wish I would have had time to join them. Yeah, right. And it's it's been an interesting summer. You know, it's either we get those really, really hot days or unfortunately we've had quite a bit of rain, you know, so it's been it's been a lower summer for sure, just because we don't have that consistent weather. Um, but the days that are, are hot are good. So, yeah, people are definitely enjoying themselves. Anyone else have any any comments? Otherwise, hopefully. Um, you know, if tomorrow night is actually our live at the Leech, um, and we have Star Six Nine playing, which again is a really big following in Oshkosh, um, should be a great night. And then Wednesday, the the Brews on the Bay with Copper Box Duo. So if the weather cooperates, it'd be great to see you guys at either one of those, either tomorrow or Wednesday night. When does tomorrow start? Um, so the event is from five to nine. From five to six, we do. Yep, five to nine. So five to six, we sell beverages. All the food trucks are there, um, and then the music is from six to nine.
I think Ray said he'd buy anybody who shows up one, right, Ray? <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Great. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you, staff, for all your reports. You guys have a lot going on. Is there any other business tonight? All right. Well, with that, I make a motion to adjourn. Second. All right, I'll do a quick roll call. Mark Helt. Aye. Davis. Aye. Jack. Matt. Here. Or yay. Millet. <laughs> Aye. Paul Mary. Aye. Stevenson. Aye. Challenger? Aye. All right, motion passed eight to zero. Thanks, everybody.